I just runs out of, runs out of the North Shore. Is that right? Yeah. So, and I began to find out. So, vampires aren't as passe as you think they no, are. No, there's actually a magazine. Is there not for vampires? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. That's been, I've, lots I've heard of them. There is. There's soundtracks, but yeah. there's. Um, I think there was over 300 vampire films made last year, and of course, uh -huh. uh, from Dust Till Dawn, I think yeah. opened last week, and uh -huh. before that, it was a vampire in Brooklyn, and right. uh, Anne Rice is even more. Is, is you know the Anne Rice movement is just incredible. So um, in investigating all these different things, I found out that the uh, vampires are exceptionally hot. Uh huh. So oh no, they're very much in, and with oh, the young yeah. people too. Oh yeah, well the they're whole gothic the whole thing. Gothic, you know? yeah. I'm surprised somebody has opened up a gothic bar or something in town. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. They've been telling me down the box that every once in a while somebody will, will show up. You know, well not for the matinee, obviously, but for <laughs> the evening show dressed with a whitish sort of face. It in has the dark. to happen. You know, it yeah. has to happen. But this magazine that I was telling you about does exist, and actually there are people who call themselves vampires. Mm -hmm. They go out at night. They don't go out in the daytime, and they have a, a thing for blood. So that sounds like people volunteer. They must be volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, you know, you're certainly in, and um, actually, it, it's interesting too that your wife is also an actor, is involved with the crucible. Well, she's doing the crucible now, and she's concentrating on the witches, and I've been concentrating yeah. on the vampires. So we've had quite an interesting Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah, bet you that's did. right. You your know. household must be very right. interesting these oh, days. Yeah. Well, it always is when you have yeah. two people in the family do the same thing. You Absolutely. Know? And it, it's been really, it's really well. It's been a hard Christmas for us in, in terms of we haven't been able to spend as much time with our son as we'd like yeah. to. You know, so you've got I think we had like Christmas Eve, we had Christmas off, yeah. but uh, we've been making up for, for that in the last yeah. little while now. Got a beautiful three-year-old Jean Anton. And with tons of hair, I don't know where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, he's the gene gorgeous. Pool, somewhere along the way, I don't yeah, know. one of those. You know, there was the little boys you'd see in the movies a long time ago with the curly hair and I big know. brown eyes. I know. Jeez, where did they come? Where does that come from? I don't know. So yeah, it keeps you busy. Oh All yeah, right, I mean, no yeah. kidding. Well, you have your life and yeah. the wonderful life of theater and film, and then you have the other life, which is you That's know. Right. Changing yeah. the diapers and all that other thing. Yeah, you actually, know? you've, um, as I mentioned, you've got a lengthy list of credits and you've had many challenging roles to get your teeth into in your mm -hmm. career and now you're into directing. But you, I've heard it said that you've said that your most challenging role has been that of a father. Well, I think so because it's, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, when you're playing a part or something, you just try to assemble what this character is. And, and um, uh, for me as an individual, it's always been really hard for me just to. Doing this, for example, it's very hard to talk. And one of my biggest fears, for example, just having to get up in front of a group of people and talk is, and be myself is a, is a very hard thing to do. I don't know why. I think it's easier to, to hide behind a character, character. or yeah. something else. But um, being no a father is a whole different thing altogether. It's a, the interesting thing for me about being a father is being able to actually relive my life. I see Johnny looking at something, and, and I remember that exact feeling. It, it sort of comes back 42 years later, uh, and you, have, you get to relive. It's, it's to see yourself growing it's up. It's like going again. back. It's like going back in time, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's, a, it's, a, it's very painful, but at the same time, it's very beautiful. You know? and it's a, here I am late in life in my 40s, and I often wonder if I ever would become a father. And I'm, I'm sort of glad in a way that I am in my 40s, because I'm not dealing with being a 21-year-old, worrying about life, That's is this right. the end of everything? I'm sort of got my feces together in yeah. <laughs> some sort yeah. of way, and I, and uh, it's nice being sort of an older father, you know. Yeah, that's nice that you can say that. Mm -hmm. And um, surely your theater background has has brought you things that make it easy. To oh yeah, well, we sit fired. around, yeah. we read Hamlet, and they have yeah. my auditions. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they say that actors actually do develop a, uh, quite a bit of psychology, just because because the that. work that you do. Well, so. I guess because you're dealing with people all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. You know? and you have to be very sensitive to yeah. different types of people. So certainly that's an asset. Well, I've wondered what in you, parenting. Well, I hope so. But I've been take him to the movie sets, trying to get him to hang around the Teamsters, yeah. you know, you look at the people who eat the donuts so you can take care of me in my older age, you know. But he's, um, he's been interested in plays, but I actually took him to, a, uh, he wanted to see A Christmas Carol, so yeah. I took him down to the Waterfront Theater and Bird Cuffling was in it, and he sat through the whole thing and he renamed the play, The Man Who Didn't Like Christmas. Oh, is that so right? he, he, Yeah, so he it's sort of liked young it. Age, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, he, he sort of that. got off on that and he wants to go to more plays, so we're thinking of going, there's the North Shore, into the woods they're doing. So I thought maybe we might try to investigate that. You know, I mean, I never had theater enter my life till I was about 16 years old when I happened to wander into um, a production of Jules Pfeiffer's Little Murderers. I just happened to be playing at the Mantle yeah. Theater Center. And we, a friend of mine and I were just arguing over whether or not it was a movie or not. And then he decided it wasn't. So I spent the money. I went inside and I, I was 16 years old. And I, I must have looked, to, there was hardly anybody in the audience. And I sat right in the front row in the center. It never occurred to me that later on the actors must have thought 
Who's this weird kid? <laughs> but that was my first introduction to theater. And you were bitten, theater. were you not? I was bitten right from the thought, yeah. right from yeah. the start. It was, it's such an amazing thing to see something that was so alive mm -hmm. on stage, you know? That's the thing about doing Dracula. Our whole visions of what Dracula and vampires are all have to do with films and with books and videos. And yeah. um, to see it on the stage, as it must have been for the first time Bela Lugosi did that, mm -hmm. it must be an, an incredible experience to some people. It certainly is to me. Yeah. And the reactions from the audiences have been fabulous in that respect. Yeah. So um, what are you trying to do with this play? What, uh, how do you see well, it? I, I, in talking about the play, uh, the really important things to me is, is if you're doing Dracula in, in the 90s, well, it has to be, uh, has a certain element of comedy involved because everybody knows the story. It's like mm -hmm. doing Hamlet or something. And it has to be a certain amount of fear and uh, passion yeah. and trying to discover what passion is and trying to discover what the passion is in each of these characters and even in, not just in Dracula. In this particular piece, uh, Dracula wants to, his passion is, is he wants to come back and he, he wa wants to find a bride, he wants to um, father a child. So that's an interesting sort of take on that. that it's different from any of the other mm -hmm. Draculas I've read. That is. That's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we've got a, a really interesting group of people who all who want other cast? things. Um, yeah. well, Simon Webb uh, oh, playing right. uh, Van Helsing. We're very lucky uh, to do. Um, I did a Lonesome Dove last year, and I and Eric McCormick, whom right. I worked with at Stratford a while ago. I was looking at him as he was riding by on the horse, and I thought, Geez, if I ever do Dracula, he'd probably do a good Dracula. And as it turned out, he was dying to do the show, and he great. came back, and he's just a, a great find. Another woman called Molly Parker, it's an introduction to theater for her because she hasn't done a lot, and uh, she's plays um, Wilhelmina and she's great. And Bernard Cuffling and Wonderful people like him. Uh, William Samples. Yeah. Uh, we have um, Jonathan um, Payne yeah. and Annabelle Kershaw who was in the original production of Dracula, Passion of Dracula that was done about 18 years ago with Brent Carver. Great, yes. And so it was really interesting for her to come back and yeah. do, she played Wilhelmina and she's come back and she's now doing um, Dr. Van Zandt. Great. We have Vince Gale and I'm trying to think if I've left anybody else out. I think that's about it. Yeah, you've got a wonderful cast. I know. Oh, Sean. Sean McDonald, who's oh. a, a new find, too. Yeah. He just uh, won a Jesse Ward for Best Actor last year for a play called Beat the Sunset. Mm -hmm. and he plays Renfield, the person who loves to eat bugs. Right. So it's, uh, yeah. They, a great cast. Oh, yeah. they're just great. They just, they just really love each other. And that's so important. A director can to leave the show. He doesn't have to go back there every two, mm -hmm. every week or three days to wonder how they are. Right. They're such a solid unit amongst themselves that uh, I can just leave. It's like being a father. You can just trust your son. Isn't that a nice go, feeling? Go, yeah, yeah, you can go leave and go all. back to your go son. Go into bonkers, stay in bonkers yeah. for a couple hours. I'll be right back. Yeah. And you know, they'll be OK. That's and super. And that's, uh, that's the kind of people they are. Yeah. Well, it seems to be working, because I haven't had the pleasure yet. I'm going, but mm -hmm. I've, had, I've heard rave reviews. Everyone loves well, it. It's, it has been. It's been nice, yeah. and that's been yeah. only due to the fact that we've, we've had a lot of people uh, put this thing together in a very short period of time. And, but they've all been very dedicated and devoted to the subject. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to do these things. They've been able to go from playing the passion to the, the comedy, the broadness of the comedy, to the, to the melodramatic style. It's, it's such a wide variety of acting styles that seem to meld together rather than, uh, you know, it doesn't look very, it isn't like a, um, uh, a, a bad melting pot, <laughs> you exactly. know? It, it yeah. is really, it really is melded together, and yeah. it's very, very unique in that respect. That's wonderful that you can say that as the director. Um, do, has your acting background helped you as a director? Well, I think so. In some ways, it helps. In some ways, it doesn't. With, uh, with I always try to now to make sure they're they're happy. <laughs> you know, it's very important to me. I remember we, one of the particular scenes, I was happy with it, but they weren't happy. The actors, so I knew that after I leave, it doesn't make any sense. You know. So let's try to find the middle ground. Let's try to make them happy and see what I can take from the last way we've put the scene together and where we can end up with. Because it's so important uh, sometimes that, that you, um, a director will leave sometimes and then um, you never get around to doing something or you mm -hmm. feel badly about it. And you spend the rest of the time trying to, to make that scene work. Right. And it's always sort of um, a sore spot in your mm -hmm. eye. you know. As you're doing a play, you begin to say, oh, I hate at that point when we get to mm -hmm. act one scene, two, or, you know, I'm on the bench. Right. But um, it's been really lucky in this respect. Uh, in some ways, it's, I'm learning so much as a director. I just mm -hmm. want to 
I like working with actors, and um, I'm very big on focus, and I, I love it when you when you find somebody uh, that nobody knows about, uh, Molly Parker, or Eric mm -hmm. McCormick. A lot of people don't know about him, and you you show them to um, an audience, and people say, "Oh, who's this? Oh, they're really neat." Mm -hmm. That aspect of it, uh, uh, finding yeah. somebody is really neat. Yeah, that is wonderful to give them that opportunity oh, yeah. and the public the opportunity to discover the actor. Or to be able to see somebody yeah. in a role we don't necessarily see somebody yeah. like John Payne is playing this blustery um, fellow, Lord Godalming, and uh, we aren't used to seeing that type of role. Or yeah. Simon Webb as right. Dr. Van Helsing, and for people to say, hey, that was sort of neat, you know. Mm. It's kind of exciting. It's kind of as though you're creating. It's a very creative process. Well, it has You're to creating be. Creating this it's, situation or this new. It's so important to give person. people a chance to grow yeah. Yeah. in this particular industry because a lot of times uh, we start off uh, in a role uh, that people, oh, he does good gangster roles. Yeah, typecast. So cast. you typecast. And they do typecast. Well, you want to get typecast. Oh, always. Yeah. In, yeah. in particular, in, in theater, that happens a lot too. Yeah. It's you begin to get typecast and you spend the rest of your life trying to get mm -hmm. cast mm -hmm. in a particular role and they spend the latter trying to get out get, of uh, it. Uh, uncast. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you didn't actually get typecast, Jay. I mean, you, you do, you've done many different types of roles, character mm -hmm. roles. I think you sort, you, you sort of see yourself in a different way. I remember in the beginning you see guys, or, uh, you, I'm going in where it says mm -hmm. large fat man or mm -hmm. large balding fat man with a big mm -hmm. nose. And then you want them to think about you. And like I said, and after all, you want them to think of you to read a guy, oh, oh uh, the, the sheriff's deputy, he's a wiry guy with right. a sense of humor. And they start thinking, oh, well, you don't be good in this Jay would. Yeah. So they start to think of you as a as person, a wiry, yeah. and rather just as a, a form of, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's different, you yeah. know. It's great. And I'm very lucky in the sense I look like a lot of people who walk down the street. Mm -hmm. So, and there's always somebody, yeah. a movie, and, um, or a play with somebody <laughs> in it who looks exactly like me. Yeah. Um, the directing brings back to mind your actually first directing project play at the Arts Club, Breaking Legs. Breaking now, that Legs, was that was last year, first yeah. First stint as a director. First stint as, not the first, no? the first uh, professional stint, oh, I guess sorry, you would say. Sorry. I was very lucky, uh, Bruin Drew wanted yeah, to do a play, and I wasn't going to be in it, but um, he thought, thought it would be more comfortable with me playing this other part, so I said, okay, I'll be in it, and end up directing in it uh, along, I was assisted by a fellow named Mark Weatherly, because right. yeah. up to a certain point, I had to tell the cast, okay, now I'm moving from director to actor. Now, as we got into our technical rehearsal, yeah. and now how, our notes will be given by Mark. Yeah. How was that? I mean, how was that? That's why I'm bringing this up, Jay, doing, directing and acting. Did you get a bit schizophrenic at times? or how did Sometimes you it is hard. It's, yeah. um, the most important thing you want to do is make sure your actors aren't getting schizophrenic. Yeah. That uh, they're very clear about what they want, and they're clear about the kind of situation we're, we're going to be going into which is a schizophrenic situation yeah. where you get an actor <laughs> and that they, don't, that they feel good about yeah. that. If they're open with it, then you can usually go yeah. along with, with yeah. it, you know. That particular play, it wasn't really, we're not talking about death of a salesman breaking legs. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the best thing about that play to try to do is to make sure it's very, very funny and it moves along mm -hmm. swiftly and that the characters are believable. Yeah. And um, we were able to do that. It was a great play. Oh, that was yeah. a fun, fun little People play to do. It, yeah. it was fun. It was nice to see Bruno back on, yeah. the, on the stage again. It yeah. was, uh, very sad with his passing, passing. his last plays. Yeah. But, uh, Wonderful actor. It was nice for him to get back on the boards, yeah. for people to see him in that That's right. respect. How about, um, I imagine you're directing a lot of your colleagues in the acting business. How is that? Oh, Switching you, roles. You mean like I in, in that normal you, life? You mean yeah, like you, you do direct a lot of co-actors that you've worked with. And no, not really. Only yeah. a good friend sometimes. And you, yeah. Sometimes you have to watch out because it's such a, a process, you know. Um, yeah. So if you're with friends or something, you can talk about each other, saying, oh, why don't you try it this way? You know that scene? Yeah. Why don't you just speed up a bit there and just start try you know, that word? Why don't you take it up and see what happens, you know? And if you know each other well enough, you can do that. Some people mm -hmm. get really weary about stuff mm -hmm. like you have to watch out. Okay. But, um, mm -hmm. I'm directing stuff around the house all the time. <laughs> I hey, bet you are. So, so, Johnny, you get, you get think about this, Johnny. What, 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 feel, what would it feel like if we had the granola <laughs> instead of the honeycombs? Tell me, how does it feel good? Yeah. You like that? Okay, let's go with the granola then. Good. We'll get lots more directing <laughs> behind you because when you get into the teens, you're going to need lots of that. Oh, I when bet. It gets into I'm going to need direction. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, okay, let's leave the directing for a bit, Jay. I'm sure you're going to be continuing in that vein mm -hmm. for a long time. And talk about your uh, career. The, uh, as oh, I God. say, the, the, <laughs> the credits are extensive, so we won't get into them all. I mean, you've mm -hmm. done, it seems like every major movie that comes to town or every series you've been in, MacGyver, um, Neon mm -hmm. Rider, Jump Street, uh, Well, it's interesting Odyssey. because, well, since the Cannell yeah. uh, Studios moved up here, it's, it's been a really great training ground for a lot of actors like myself. And um, mm -hmm. coming from Winnipeg, I talk through my nose anyway. <laughs> and I think I have an American sort of sense. I don't know what it is. You seem, I, you know, you do have an American. I don't know what yeah. I, I, it is. It's, I see a lot of people from Projection. Winnipeg, too. And, yeah. and they're always, <laughs> you yeah. run into them, you know, they're always either New York or the strangest yeah. places. And they all, yeah. it's, you know, I guess it's a North End. You could uh, be a New, thing, New Yorker. You know. New York, I mean, certain, New York, yeah, what to a certain that? extent. Yeah. I mean, you know, Winnipeg, New York. Yeah, yeah. but you know. you, you you're working all the time, like I say. We're trying and, trying to yeah. now. Uh, now I'm at the point in my life where I'm just trying to, to really take on the, the things that challenge me. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have to say, look, I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't do this, one day judge thing. It's important for me to, to try to, mm -hmm. to challenge myself, and it, it becomes less and less about money now and more about challenging right. sort of things. It's nice that you can do that. What's well, hard? I remember I was doing Hercule Poirot and in, in something, and and I got offered a really wonderful role in um, uh, a film with um, Ray Liotta. I forget, Unforgettable or something. It was one of those things, and um, we were almost able to work it out except for the um, opening night, which they needed to shoot uh, at the, this particular place. They couldn't get out of it, and um, I had to turn it down. It was really important for me. Mm -hmm. Um, to uh, the Gateway Theater and to the Ken Newfield there to, to keep that thing going. Sometimes the American uh, film thing that's happening here, it's uh, sometimes it's, it's like uh, you're ma you have to keep your marriage to the city uh, because sometimes they're like a, a mistress or a girlfriend or something right. like that. Yeah. And you have to watch out you don't bank just yeah. on that. I can't do that yeah. because you, you can never tell. Um, You'll do all this work, like you say. You're in this. Right. You're in this. And some people, somebody someday will say, you know, I think Jay, maybe he's overexposed. And some people will say, what do you, what do you mean? Maybe that's too much. Yeah. And you know, you think you're right. And then the paranoia starts. Mm -hmm. and then you don't work for six or seven months. So I try to mm -hmm. always dabble, keep one foot in the theater, which is really a home for me. Or I try doing a lot of voiceover work or animation work, or yeah, you've just done to try to always to, to move around a lot, that's great. because it helps me a lot, and it helps. Yeah. Uh, I think. It, the industry, you know. Probably helps you keep your sanity, too. Oh, definitely. Balance. Believe me, I tell you. Because you get stuck into it. Well, oh, some I'm people sure. are very happy doing yeah. that. Yeah. I couldn't be. I just, no. that's the kind of person I am. I just, I just can't, you know, I'm, I'm not a happy individual, I guess. Anyway, I have a problem being happy, but, but I. And yet, I, and yet you've made a lot of other people happy. I, well, it's one of those strange yeah, things. Yeah, like I hear it, you were, you've stolen sh several shows and We're No Angels, apparently. Uh -huh. People were saying you stole that. I was actually wow. talking to someone before we went on air and who was in that movie. That's very kind. Said that you were just, people just loved you and. Well, I had f a fun. Yeah. It's, I learned that, that there's no difference between working with um, Rick Reed, who's a friend of mine, and working with Robert De Niro. There is no difference except for the people afterwards in between, while well, the camera's off, who hang around. Rob De Niro. Right. He has 20 people hanging around him, and yeah. Rick is, you know, a couple of flies <laughs> buzzing around his head. That's it. Yeah. But there is no yeah. difference. And uh, once you really realize that, in the beginning, you say, well, I want to work with this, I want to, I want to learn, I want to, you know. It becomes less and less, the most important thing is about doing good work and about your part and about being involved, you know. Which, um, there are too many movies and TV shows to, to mention, but is there one that really you remember that you was challenging and you, was very um, important for you? I don't know. I have uh, been very lucky in the last little while. I did a show called Evelyn Lau, Diary of Evelyn yes. Lau, which was really uh, interesting for me. You were me. the psychiatrist. I was a psychiatrist. Yeah. And it was interesting playing that part with Sandra Oh. It was uh, one of her first things she's ever done. She was just marvelous in the piece. And, um, it was interesting doing that um, because it, it wasn't about me as much as it was about just listening. Yeah. And, uh, and that was a really interesting process. Uh, you know, we had a really good time doing that, and um, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, it's different. I've never seen it like that before. You weren't doing anything," and I, and I wasn't doing it. They didn't have to act. It was just, you yeah. know, yeah. it was a really something I, different. I enjoyed again. a lot the, yeah. doing that. Sterling Gunnison was a really splendid director. Um, yeah. I just did a production called Wide Awake, where I play a funeral director uh, by a woman named Lynn Stoppelwich, um, who's friends with John Poser, mm -hmm. and. Um, 
He was friends with Bruce Sweeney. They're a group of people who all come from UBC Film School, and they're putting out all these films um, that are just incredible, winning these Great. awards like Grocer's Wife and yeah. and Live Bait. And I, I think Wide Awake will be a another really exciting thing for me because I enjoyed doing it. And we were all there. I was making $100 a day yeah. to cover the babysitting. And it's so important for me at this time mm -hmm. in my life to, to just to do things that really Help others. Say, help me or say something yeah. to me. Yeah. And help others, and too. Help, help others. other upcoming yeah, you, actors and producers. I think producers. you have to pass on on yeah. after a while. Yeah. It's so, I mean, I would be nowhere if I hadn't uh, attended once. Um, um, I mean, it was, I think it was after Comedy of Errors or something, mm -hmm. where they have those talkbacks where the mm -hmm. students come and talk right. to you and you know, the actors. I would be nowhere without those actors if I hadn't yeah. been... Luckily, um, the people like Ken Walsh, for example, had come over to this place and directed me in, in the Under Milk when I was about 19. Bernard Hopkins did the same thing, another famous actor, directed me in Midsummer Night's Dream when I was about 18. I would be nowhere without them. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's our duty to, to pass that torch on to these other people. Um, apart from your, your, your film and, and television career, you have an incredible, I mean, that's where you started in theater, mm -hmm. background in theater. You won four Jessies, mm -hmm. and um, you started at a young age and didn't really have much formal training. Well, I didn't, I guess it, it's, like I said, I was very lucky because of my size, the way I look immediately yeah. when I wanted to get involved with theater. They immediately put me on stage because I, I always was playing these older guys. Now, eventually, I hope that somebody be playing. <laughs> My age, you know, yeah. very much like that fellow. What's his name? Wilford Brimley, you know, the actor. Right. He's always playing older guys. What is he? He's probably the same age as me. But uh, you just—that's um, how I learned. I learned from being on the stage, yeah. from watching people. Uh, performance that really changed my life was being in them, playing. I had three small, tiny roles, one line each, in Cyrano, and Len Carey was playing uh, Cyrano. And Jean Gascon was the director. Oh, Jean Gascon. And I remember him coming up to me and saying, no, don't know, JJ, make it big, make it big. Yeah. If you make it big, I can always take you down. If you make it too small, I think you're a rotten actor. I don't even hang around you. But it was one of the greatest things I ever learned from him. So you had wonderful says, teachers. Have, oh, yeah. You, you learned doing it. It was, um, yeah. it was just a sheer delight for me to stand all the time in the wings at the last scene of Cyrano dying every night. And it was really, uh, yeah. really, in, it was really. So in. the theater was your school, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think. Um, I was like, you know, I had no home yeah. and since I left school of grade 11. I had nothing else to turn to, and um, the family of the theater really meant a lot to me. It was a place to go to, and it was something I, you know, I mean, I was a really bad actor, and it was a big actor, and I remember speaking to a friend of mine, uh, uh, now he said, I couldn't believe what you were doing when you did that show. You were upstaging me like crazy, and I said, upstaging? I don't even know where downstage <laughs> or upstaging <laughs> was, and you're telling me now. Yeah. But I knew that I wanted to be there, and I wanted to... I came from a sort of small, a bad part of town, Winnipeg, and uh, a lot of the people there, you know, like the Ronnie Dangerfield. In school, in school, they took two pictures, either front and the side, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, you know. And uh, so that was a way for me to sort of get out, I guess, to yeah. exercise those demons of my past. Great. What, do you, what future do you see for live theater, Jay? Um, you know, you're part of the baby boom generation, and we hear these things about the cocooning and, mm -hmm. you know, people like yourself with children staying at home, watching videos, the whole... I don't know. It's so hard. I, it's ha I think it really has to start early. Luckily, in, in Canada, we have places like Green Thumb Theater and Carousel. Mm -hmm. We have to try to bite them really early. I mean, I was 16 when I first saw a play, you know? Yeah. So get and it into to the me, schools. it's uh, it's such a part of uh, of life. I can't imagine. It's like when the symphony was going to mm -hmm. die here. It, it's just unimaginable, you know, yeah. that that would happen. And if theater goes, I mean, it's it's so important to go see Showboat mm -hmm. and to go see um, uh, No Exit, which is now the Gastown mm -hmm. Actor Studio. They're two separate things altogether. They have the same thing there at theater, but right. they're two very important things. Yeah. And it's so important for us to try to get those people to go showboat, to go to no exit, and those people to go to no exit to go to showboat. Because um, theater is so many different things, and it's trying to explain to somebody in school of how it is. I mean, you can watch her, uh, Star Trek um, the Voyage Home three times. It'll always be the same. Mm -hmm. But you can go see uh, Hamlet a hundred times, and it'll always be different. That's right. And it's so important for us to pass it on to our children, and to, for us to do ourselves. If you have a choice, 
I mean, movies are, are they're so easy to get mm -hmm. now. Blockbuster video, everything is there in the yeah. corner store. Yeah. And it is hard to get to theaters. It's That's hard right. to find a parking space and hard to find a babysitter. Mm -hmm. But once you're there, it's, a magical it's an experience that will yeah. take you through the next year. That's right. And when you have a, I did a production of Cerno <laughs> or something, where people are so affected by it, you know, that it makes them come back again and again. Oh, yeah, so you can yeah. say once you're bitten. Well, your son is lucky. On that note, Jay, we're going to have to wrap. Okay. We didn't get into talking about your wife, Susan well, Mystic, as right. an actor, but that's for another interview. Okay, you'll bring her okay, back. And how you guys juggle your careers. That's right. <laughs> Best of luck with the play in the future, and we'll be Thank looking for you as usual all over. Okay. Thanks for coming down and chatting with us. Okay, bye-bye. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Andersons for providing this lovely setting for the interviews. For contact, I'm Gloria Crichton. Please join us next time.